Hey, we've got another little note from Caltrans press release saying Caltrans dedicated to a litter free California. We all should be now in an effort to raise the public's awareness and prevent littering Caltrans maintenance crews across the state will be participating in the annual statewide litter pickup day and that's coming up tomorrow Thursday April 21st crews crews will dedicate the majority of their work day of picking up litter trash and debris along state highways press release notes Litter in California is an ongoing problem, results in significant economic, social, and envir environmental costs. Litter is aesthetically displeasing. Well, I agree with that. As well as presenting a range of threats to human and ecologic health and affects the quality of life throughout the citizens or for the citizens throughout California. Now, litter increases the risk of personal injury to Caltrans employees, the threat of fire along the state highway system, and the spread of diseases in communities also can threaten wildlife and pollute California, California's waterways. And the press release notes these impacts are real. Hey, last year, Caltrans spent $76.5 million on litter removal throughout the state highway system, almost 153,000 cubic yards of litter that's about 900 and 9,562 garbage trucks were collected and disposed of. Now, in addition to not throwing trash on roadways, the public can help by participating in the Caltrans Adopt a Highway program. It provides an avenue for individuals, organizations, businesses to help maintain sections of roadsides within the state highway system in California. Hey, more than 120,000 Californians have cleaned up and enhanced over 15,000 shoulder miles of roadside. Now, participation allows the public to adopt sections of highway for beautification projects such as litter removal, vegetation control, graffiti removal, and tree and shrub planting. Hey, to become a volunteer or sponsor, get more information, contact Tom Scott. He's the Caltrans District 9 Adopt a Highway Coordinator, 760-872-5202. Well, we're getting some information from the great folks at the Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care Center, a resident in the Highlands Mobile Home Park called Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care and said a tree need to come down. They're afraid there might be raven eggs or babies and it's too high to see into. Now concerned for the birds and aware of federal and state laws that forbid destruction of active bird nests, Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care Director Cindy Kamler. She counseled Highlands Management, residents, and Allen's Tree Service to find a solution. Now, using a special lift, the tree trimming crew was able to see into the nest and determine that it was not in use. The tree and nest could be removed. Kamler said, we were pleased to see how everyone worked together to resolve the situation. Now that release also notes the tree trimming and removal is best done in the fall or winter before the native wild birds build or refurbish nests and lay eggs. Kamler said, we sent out mailings to remind folks to look carefully for nesting birds before pruning or removing limbs. Most bird parents hide nests and camouflage them to keep their young safe from predators, and that makes it hard for us to see them. If a nest does come down, you can call Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care for help. Now, along with tending to trees, hedges, and shrubs, many homeowners have also begun work in their gardens. Wildlife can be helpful in the garden by pollinating some plants or eating insects that damage fruit or vegetables. However, the press release notes, sometimes animals take a little larger share of your harvest than you're willing to give. Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care does offer a free living with wildlife in the garden handout. Council on methods on excluding unwanted nibblers. There are many non-toxic, non-lethal ways to discourage wildlife from taking too much, said Assistant Director Kelly Barr. Get more information, Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care, 760-872-1487. wonder if that works on some party guests. An earthquake economic resiliency forum was held ahead of the Seismological Society of America's annual meeting this week in Reno. Now, there was an associated press story that was issued, widely picked up by major newspapers, including the LA Times and San Francisco Chronicle. Now, the AP story said one piece of information from the forum was that the Eastern Sierra is long overdue for a large earthquake. AP story reported seismologists said it's likely the Reno area will eventually experience the kind of destructive quake that rocked Japan. 
Rick Kohler, an assistant professor of geology at Nevada's Bureau of Mines and Geology, said a magnitude 7 earthquake could potentially at any time, anywhere along the California-Nevada border. AP Story said the most recent magnitude 6 was 22 years ago, Carson Valley, south of Carson City. Now that story also states the largest earthquake ever recorded on the Sierra Fault was a 7.4 in 1872. In the Owens Valley, south of Yosemite, third largest in California behind the magnitude 7.9 at Fort Tohon and 1857 and the 7.8 in San Francisco in 1906 just had the anniversary anniversary of that. Now the AP story noted new technology being developed in California could help mitigate damage on the Las Vegas Strip. If the big one hits 150 to 200 miles northwest in Death Valley, a scientist said a magnitude 7 in the Owens Valley eh, could translate to a 30 or 40 second warning for Las Vegas. All right, we'll be back with a weather report, hopefully with no earthquakes in the forecast.